Oh, really? Yeah. And uh, so how many hours are you working a day? Uh, 10 to 12. Oh, okay. I thought it was going to be even worse than that, but that is a long day. That's, is it, is it heady? Like, does it like wear you out? Oh yeah. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. By the time I come home, I'm not, I haven't been cooking. I just go grab something or eat somewhere. Right. Right. It's uh, it's a lot. Welcome to Over 50, starting over. This is our special <laughs> guest episode with Geza. I'm going to always, always mess up your last name. Kasai. Kasai. <laughs> okay, <laughs> there you have it. I'll put it in writing, of course. And, oh, geez, I don't have my notes in front of me. That Because I really just uh, been looking forward to this as a very loose podcast, but really looking forward to it because we have fun conversations and you have a fun story. So uh, Geza is an art director in the movie industry. He is from Cleveland. Uh, we mm, cross paths in our in my field as well. And you know what I was trying to think about earlier today was when we met. Now, was that going all the way back to the YMCA working out? It, it was. Yeah. Wow. That was a long time ago. You think that's like 15 years? I think um, it is longer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, uh, it should be about 19, 19 years, maybe. Wow, wow. So then when they finally built that uh LA fitness, yeah. uh a whole bunch of us all migrated uh jump jump ship. Yeah, because <laughs> that Y was kind of dirty and is a dungeon, you know. And it was expensive for, for what, what it was. was. Yeah. yeah, yeah, for sure. So I loved LA Fitness for a while. Are you still there? It's now um urban active. I am, but uh, no, it's in LA Fitness. It turned out, it was Gold's Urban. Now oh, it's LA. Right, right. I went I'm, backwards. I still have my membership. I haven't been there in a year and a half since this. Uh, oh, oh this whole right. Thing. Oh, so I. Uh, I got sick of the college kids throwing their weights around and grunting and grunting. I really did. It got on my nerves so bad. So when they built this Planet Fitness, which is way closer for me anyway, on at Cedar Center, I, I went yeah. to that and they have that credo of like no muscle heads kind of a yeah. thing, which that's pretty nice. I, I like it for the most part. Yeah. I, I started going at four and nobody was there. So it was mm. nice. Four in the morning? No, four in the afternoon. Oh, oh, okay, gotcha, gotcha. So everybody shows up at five-ish. I leave as they're coming in, so. Yeah, you know, LA Fitness is like a nightclub after five, after work, <laughs> isn't it? It's yeah. unbelievable. Oh, yeah. 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 So uh, uh, tell us, uh, Gaza, and I want to talk about just, the. Uh, you know what, I'm going to start off with some sillier stuff, because I just really want to BS a little bit. Uh, I just got my second COVID shot it's Friday. Uh, I'm getting mine this upcoming Thursday. No, not this Thursday, next Thursday. Your second? Yeah. Oh, nice, nice. So I wanted to ask you about that. Since you are on set, I'm sure that you're around a lot of people every day, right? Uh, More more than I've been for Mm, a year. So yeah, yeah, we we test every single Friday. Oh, wow. And if we have, if anybody's going on location scouts Mm -hmm. uh, to see what's what, uh, they get tested the day before so that they're not around everybody else out out in the field so Mm -hmm. yeah insane amounts of testing pretty much everybody's getting their shots here because uh a lot of a lot of people in this industry have had covid because of trying to jump back into work too soon Mm -hmm. yeah i would our show luckily has not had nothing that i wanted to ask you so are they mandating it i would think they would be as a company mandating the shots yeah no Oh, wow. Well, wow. no, but I only know one person that's not getting it, and that's because they have uh, allergies and issues with mm. everything. So, oh, that's a good reason. Yeah. Um, yeah, that, I wanted to ask your uh, philosophy on it because it's so polarized along and politicized along with everything else. So, I'm, I'm not a vaccine person, but I'm around people and I travel a lot. So, mm. I need to, uh, I, I just figured, why not? If yeah. it kills me it kills me if it makes me better then that's all the better too so yeah i had absolutely no side effects from the second shot no which none not even a sore arm nothing i forgot i even got it and oh, i got nice. i got the pfizer do you know what you're yeah getting? yeah pfizer yeah yeah i'm hoping i have nothing because i'm actually moving i'm moving around every month 
I'm trying to find, you know, learn the city. Oh, and so oh. uh, my move out date is the day after I get my shot. Mm. So, so if I have any side effects, I'm going to be in a world of hurt. <laughs> Are you doing like Airbnb? You're in Chicago, right? I am. Yeah. yeah. Are you doing yeah. like Airbnb? I am. Uh huh. Yeah. And so that's your plan is to intentionally move around a bit. So you just get to, yeah, that, I think that's yeah. a great plan. Yeah. Now we are going to get into your backstory and stuff, but first I wanted to ask you, can you tell us what your, what movie you're working on? So it's a Amazon series oh. uh, called light years. And it's, uh, it's kind of, it's got a sci-fi element to it, but it's nice. not a sci-fi show. Mm-hmm. Uh, at least his first season isn't. I'm, I'm guessing that they could go anywhere with it after having read the scripts. But uh, yeah, not too much. I, could, I know Sissy Spacek's in it. Hmm. Um, Ed O'Neill, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah. So. Sissy Spacek was in, uh, is it called Blood, Blood Something? It was set in the Keys. It was so good. Was she, it? Oh my God, it was so good. <laughs> I started watching it because... Um, I think it's bloodlines because it's about a family. Uh, they all grew up in the keys. Uh, she's the matriarch of it. And um, I started watching it because it was set in the keys and I'm a beach bum, but I've never been to the keys, believe it or not. I go to, Florida. I haven't either. Yeah, I really? Either. We're, yeah. we're like the last two left in, yeah. in America. To, yeah. So, but it ended up being such a great show riveting about four seasons. I think it was one of those. I couldn't stop binging. You know, yeah. was so yeah. good. Yeah, I was yes. thinking the other day that we actually ran into each other in Florida two years ago. Oh, I was at the thinking airport. about that. Yeah, yeah, how wild was that? That blew <laughs> yeah. my mind. At this, uh, was it the Bradenton Airport? Or it was. was it? Yeah. 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 So we go every year uh, to visit Lisa's mom. And uh, what brought you that time two uh, years ago? We needed a vacation. Oh, okay. Where yeah. Where did you go? Uh, Sarasota. Mm. I love Sarasota. It, yeah. it suits us. It, it's like our second home. We've been there about 11 or 12 times now. Yeah. And we consider doing the snowbird thing. So I have too. Yeah. Yeah. We just fell in love with Nashville, though. I do as, love Nashville. Yeah. And uh, it's an eight hour drive and another eight hours to Florida. So it's kind of in the middle. Got the yeah. change of seasons, but without our horrific weather. You know? Yeah, no, no freezing cold and right. Oh, I really liked it, and I didn't think I would because I hate country music. Oh, I thought the exact same thing. Yeah, and, but the live music there, even though it's country, is not country. You, it was all Eagles everywhere we went. They're playing <laughs> Eagles, so I love the Eagles. Yeah. So yeah, I I thought it was the coolest place. We wouldn't be staying in the downtown area. We and we sure. did. We looked at all the outskirts. We did a lot of driving. That was the whole plan. So we got to, we got a pretty good feel for it. But we won't want to go back. But we're also going to look at Charleston, uh, South Carolina. Yep, we and, were just there recently. And what did you think? Oh, I, I love hear it. I hear great things about yeah, it. Yeah, I love it. Mm. And are, were you looking at it as a possible relocation? Yeah. Oh, okay. I look at everywhere I go as a possible relocation. Yeah. Even though I like Cleveland, it's yeah. easy, to, easy love, to live there. Yeah. And it's easy when I leave for months at a time to not feel bad that I'm paying a mortgage there because it's yeah. not a, it's not an LA mortgage or yeah. anything. So it's good. I, and in the summer, oh my God, I love it here in the summer. It's spring yeah. and spring and summer. I'm a huge cyclist. The cycling here, the more places we go to, that I'm looking at as a possible relocation place, the more I appreciate cycling in Cleveland. Yeah, you realize a lot of places are not cycle friendly. I mean, mm -hmm. Chicago is, they have bike lanes everywhere. Mm -hmm. It's horrific. I couldn't mm -hmm. imagine riding a bike here. Really? Boy, that's yeah. something. <laughs> Sarasota. <laughs> Sar <laughs> wow, man. They, they drive crazy in Florida. <clears throat> yeah. yeah. Yeah, that would be terrifying. It's terrifying driving there. It really yeah. is. Yeah. So Gaza, tell, uh, please tell us a, a bit about your journey because you started out in jewelry design, right? I did. Yeah. So yeah. I was a, my dad was a jeweler. So I learned when I was 12, I was actually working for him, uh, getting paid probably a dollar an hour for a year. And then, uh, by the time I was in high school, I was working at different jewelry stores, uh, doing design. So it wasn't just fixing jewelry. It was a goldsmith designer mm -hmm. um 
did that till I was 28. And then uh, that's when I graduated with my architecture degree. So I became my, uh, not a registered architect, but a architectural designer, mm. more or less. I decided I didn't want to be registered because uh, I design. I don't, uh, I wasn't just doing drawings like everybody else. Uh, I was hired out to different jobs to and different firms to do design work. So everything I do is design jewelry, design buildings, houses. Now, then I uh, transitioned into the movies from a friend of mine that got laid off in architecture. And the first job he got as a set designer, and he was a registered architect at one point. Mm -hmm. uh, he worked his way up working for free in the movies. Uh, it's no joke when they say you typically have to work your way up. He, his first job, he was working uh, tr driving trucks for free. Then he did uh, PA work, secretarial type running around. And then, uh, like I said, his first movie, uh, Bruce Willis movie, he got asked to set design and then they needed more people. So he asked me and another friend of ours, uh, who was also in architecture, if we would be interested. And I said, sure, I'll give it a shot. Cause by then I had my own company for, I've had my own business for 14 years. So I was able to, you know, moonlight doing, I was moonlighting doing the movie work, even though that was the bulk of my day. Wow. Uh, so, yeah. So ever since then, all I've been hired as a uh, set designer and pretty instantly moved up to assistant art director and, uh, not long after that, art director. And then I still set design and assistant art direct, depending on the job. I turn down more work than I accept. Wow. Because, because I read these scripts or I hear what the story is. And if it's not interesting to me, I'm not going to do it just to do it. Because mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you not, don't need to. I don't need to. That's exactly. Right. I, could, I could still do work with my business, uh, which is architecture and graphic design. 3d modeling and then i also get hired out uh as a vendor to other movies doing 3d printing uh, props design things like that that's cool so yeah. like with the show well why don't you tell us a few uh of the bigger movies that you worked on because you worked on quite a few and they're pretty yeah, yeah they're pretty big yeah so the uh, the bruce willis one i worked on never got finished which is unfortunate it had ben kingsley in it and was it COVID? COVID do it? No, no. This was in 2015. Mm. Uh, it was the producers had a fallout with each other. Oh. Oh. So they uh, they sunk like like three or four million into it. So we all got paid. And then they said, that's it. It's done. Go home. Wow. Yeah. Although now I saw just uh, two weeks ago, Mel Gibson's taken over that role. Mm. And, they're, and they're making it in Canada. Hmm. So I'm curious to see if they'll use what I designed there. Or I'm guessing not, but I don't know. Okay. And <laughs> um, a big one that just came out, I think, on HBO Max, I don't recall off the top of my yeah, head. Yeah. So, uh, well, real quick, the first bigger one after that was uh, I art directed ICU mm. with um, Helen Hunt. Oh. And then, uh, then after that, I think uh, White Boy Rick came out with Matthew McConaughey. Cool. That did pretty well. It was a good movie. And then uh, the recent one that came out is a huge hit. It's called uh, Judas and the Black Messiah. That's it. Yeah. That one's uh, Daniel Kaluuya has already won a Grammy for it. Not a Grammy. Uh, not a, oh my gosh. What did he win? Um, I, I, Oscar? No, he's up for an Oscar, I believe. Mm, I don't so know up, anything about that stuff. Up for Academy Award. Yeah, I don't, I don't really watch him either. So oh. That's why I always, oh. I think Grammy's music. So <laughs> uh, I think you're right. So Academy Award, I think you'd be. But he, won, he won another one before that. A Golden oh. Globe. He won a Golden Globe. Just Yeah. What, what's the difference? What, why? You know. Yeah, I don't know. Just keep giving them awards. <laughs> yeah, pat, pat each other on the back. Right, yeah, right, right. Yeah, they, well, that's why they do it. Not, yep. not just the actors, everybody. A lot of people love that stuff. Yeah. I mean, just absolutely can't wait to tune into that. I yeah. think it's so boring. It's like watching oh, it's, a parade or something like yeah, uh, it's, it's or the NFL draft. You know? it's like, yeah. yeah. I don't watch. Who's got time for that? 
Right, right, right. So, and I, so I shouldn't say everybody. All of us in the background, we don't really care about it. Mm. You know? mm. The movies sure. don't happen without just about every single person that's on a film. And mm. most of them realize it. Uh, like Daniel gave his one speech for the Golden Globe. And the first thing he did was thank the crew in Cleveland, which, wow. you know, it's really nice. But, you know, we work on these things for four or five months at a time. So it's nice to, uh, nice to win. Yeah. But I've worked, I've worked on, oh, another movie I worked on, uh, Dark Waters with uh, Anne Hathaway, Mark Ruffalo. Mm. And that, oh, that one right. happened to be for the uh, production designer that won uh, Academy Award for Black Panther. Oh, really? Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Now, when you're art directing, obviously you play different roles uh, behind the scenes on these different movies. But when you're art directing, are you meeting early on with the director and talking through? Yeah, so I'm hired... I'm hired sometimes before the directors are hired. Oh, really? Yeah, because they the, the producers, the people that come up with the money and get the money, uh, they get the idea and then they know, okay, we need to build a lot of sets. So we need to bring the people in early. Mm -hmm. So they'll try to get a production designer and an art director on pretty much right in the beginning before almost anybody else is starting. Mm -hmm. And then... Uh, then we pick the teams of people that we want to come in from the pool that's available. Mm -hmm. uh, I can tell you right now, we can't find anybody to do anything because everybody is filming around the country. Catching so, up, right? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, wow. Like at all the productions. I mean, there's five or six things going on in Chicago. Mm. Atlanta's booked, New Orleans, Cleveland. Oh, wow. I, I'd say the first two weeks after I got hired on this, I got five or six calls to see okay. if I would go on their shows. So, so yeah, so I deal with the director and the production designer, and then I put together the budgets and meet with the producers and tell them how much my portion of stuff is going to cost that I know about. Hmm. So. Now, so let me ask you, cause I really, I have no idea. So are you uh, talking through what set locations, what locations you're shooting at? Um, I staging. Uh, I, I go to, I go to some of the locations on some movies. This one, they brought me in specifically for the sci-fi element, hmm. which is on a stage. Hmm. So I have my work cut out on that. Um, but normally I would be going on locations, giving my input, whether it's good, what the issues are. And then, you know, we have to measure. So whether I'm measuring it or we bring a set designer out to measure. Because uh, a lot of times we recreate things. So we could go on a location and later we're like, okay, we need to rebuild this exact place on stage as well. So yeah, it changes and it's, it's never one single job. And then I'm in charge of, you know, the, the rest of the art department, the graphic designer, the set designers, um, help with um, set deck, letting them know what, what they kind of need to do for us. And, mm -hmm. you know, that we pick, like if it's architectural stuff, we pick what we think it should be. And then the set designers come back with what they can get. So... It's just input on everybody. Mm. The only one I don't deal with practically is the uh, costume designer. Wow. Yeah. They deal with our production designer, who's my boss, technically. Uh, so the director and the production designer come up with the idea of what they want to see. Mm -hmm. And they say, okay, go. Mm -hmm. They don't care how it gets built. They don't care about anything except that that it needs to look like what they told me they want it to look like. And so you are also, uh, as our art director, are you in charge of the lighting people? Uh, I work with the lighting people so that if we have certain conditions where, like if we're building a stage set, you know, or we have to figure out our, is the structure going to hold a ceiling that we put on our stage and then, we have to make that ceiling move. So I, I'm in charge of a construction department mm -hmm. to have them build this stuff and then grip an electric to be able to do what they need to do. Mm -hmm. They'll tell me what, light, what, how much light they're bringing in, 
uh, how the rig things, uh, how they're going to rig it. I don't tell them how to rig it and just make sure that everybody's stuff is not in the way of everybody else's. Mm -hmm. Do you find this really fun or is it really hard work and kind of a drag? You know, it's both. Yeah. Sounds There's, like you do a lot of paperwork, which I hate. I'm on the phone a lot. Oh. And I think that's now because of COVID, because our set designers are not on location. They're working <clears> from home. So I'm constantly having them change or revise drawings. And then I'm always on the phone with the other departments. And then, you know, there's only so many of us working. So we have to call vendors. Mm -hmm. uh, like I'm getting a, a big part of my set is cut out of foam blocks that are uh, three foot by four foot by eight foot blocks of foam. Mm. And it's going to be like 30 of them stuck together. And it's being cut out uh, with a robotic arm, like the ones you see that put together cars. Yeah. So, so I've been finding the companies that'll do that and arguing with them about the prices they're trying to charge. And wow. So yeah, I deal with everybody. I deal with the printing companies sometimes doing their graphics, uh, things like that. You do a lot of different stuff for an architect. I do. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, even when I worked in architecture, I did a lot more stuff than most architects get to. So, yeah. And um, so is, is your regular architecture job, is that kind of more fun because it's more focused? It's no, I don't like to be for, focused. Oh, so you, you thrive in chaos. I do. Wow. I, do. I, I get bored easily. Uh, I get, I could see that. I could totally see that about you. Yeah. You dabble in everything. I do. You didn't, you didn't even mention you've done. I mean, we started talking over web design and stuff like that years and years yeah. ago. You know? Yeah, I do. I still do maybe three people's websites, but uh, I hate it. <laughs> <laughs> Tech changes so much. Yeah. In fact, not only do I hate that, I actually wish I never learned computers, even though my whole life is. I can't do a single part of my job without a computer. Yeah. What do you mean? But I'm just always attached to this thing. Oh yeah. Me too though. And yeah. you know, in our last episode, our last podcast, Marlon and I were talking about uh, how I'm here in my rental house now for three weeks, remodeling, repairing and all that until my next renters come in. And I was talking about how it's just really nice to work with my hands because I'm yeah. always attached to the computer. So it's nice to have a balance. Yeah. Well, and that's the nice thing about the movies is there's a good chunk of my time spent in the office coordinating everything, getting everything going. But once the building starts, my job becomes to go look at the stuff that's being built every day, mm -hmm. uh, talk to the scenic painters, to everybody that's decorating and putting things in there and building it. So. Yeah. Now, see, it sounds like as you talk about it, it sounds like you're working with like a bunch of uh, down to earth people all doing a certain role, that kind of thing. But when you see movies, the first thing you think about it are egos and stuff like that. Do you have to walk any fine lines with that kind of stuff ever? Rarely. Rarely. That's nice. I mean, there's once in a great while production designers think they're, uh, they're the star. Oh, I mean, wow. You know, sometimes they, I don't know. I'll probably be I'll probably be a production designer pretty soon. Mm. Um, I don't know. I don't know if I want to be, but I think it's just natural. I design, so why not design mm. the movies myself too? It sounds uh, fun. Yeah, it is. But it's uh, every step up is a little little more of your time. Mm. If, you know, before as an assistant art director, the I work my twelve hour day. I go home. I don't think another thing about the movie until I show up the next morning. Yeah. As an art director, I'm still answering texts even when I come home. Yeah. Go to sleep thinking about it, wake up thinking about it. Wow. And as a production designer, even on the weekends, if they call you, you got to go running. So, mm -hmm. and you also just up and you packed up and moved to Chicago for six, five or six months. Uh, yeah. Is that hard for you? I mean, you, you know, like, even your downtime doesn't sound like it possibly. It's, uh, it's, only, hard it's only hard because of COVID. Because mm. mm. I like to go out and experience the cities mm -hmm. and uh, you can't really. Mm. I mean, I go yeah. out 
I get food, but you can't talk to anybody. Everybody's wow. wearing masks. And yeah. then you run back in it. A lot of places are still, Chicago is pretty tied down with their mm. following the rules a lot better than most places. Mm. Mm. So even joggers jog with masks on. Ooh, brutal. Yeah. yeah. Wow. I, I, hey, I've gone to the gym you know, regularly, regularly through all of this. And it seems pretty bizarre to walk in with your mask on, walk to a machine, take it off, you know, and uh, do your routine and stuff. And then it's like, well, do I bother putting this back on in between machines or not? Sometimes I do, you know? Yeah. yeah. So uh, I've not had any brushes with COVID. I don't, my aunt and uncle ha have had it. Um, and they're what you would call the uh, at-risk uh, people. And they said it was like a cold, like it yeah. wasn't that bad. So I don't, I'm really looking yeah. forward to getting on the other side of this. I've had uh, two people I know die. Uh, one that was a COVID denier, almost, almost die. Really? No longer, no longer COVID <laughs> denier. <laughs> Actually two, two people almost died from it that were like, no, this is not real. Wow. So then yeah. I know somebody that's had it twice. The second time was much worse, but not hospital bad. So, wow. Yeah. Who knows? Yeah. Who, knows who does? Know? Is... I don't know. Um, I'm always looking at the charts and stuff and seeing like what state's doing better, which, you know, Ohio's got a little bit of an uptick going on. From what I saw, so does California, but uh, I don't watch the news. So it popped up on my phone. I didn't even read the story. <laughs> Oh, gotcha. Gotcha. But we hey. do have a girl in our office that had it back in June mm -hmm. last year. Mm -hmm. Still can't taste and smell everything. Yeah, I hear that quite a and bit. She, and she's early 20s. Wow. Yeah. I, I've heard people uh, say it takes like, for those that have that symptom, uh, it takes up to six months to get yeah. that back. Uh, it's beyond that. And, and her hair's falling out. Really? I found out that's a symptom. I was like, yeah, I'll, I'll get the shot. <laughs> for sure i'm already I'm really, losing it <laughs> yeah i'm really happy to have that and i'm really getting to the point gaze where i just want to be like look you gotta you're afraid and you want to wear your mask go ahead but i'm done with the mask now i'm vaccinated i'm you know <laughs> i'm just sick yeah. of it all but uh it'll be I'm, what it'll be i think everybody is Right. We'll so see. back to the movies. I wanted to ask you, yeah. you don't have to throw out any numbers or anything, but uh, is it, is it fairly lucrative or is it just like another hard job? It's uh, it's insanely lucrative. Like when, <laughs> when you hear people say that they, they pay, you know, a hundred million dollars for a movie and you're like, where does all that go? I'd say only maybe 15 to 20% of it goes to the actors. Unless it's oh. like a Brad Pitt or Tom Cruise yeah. or somebody, then then it's yeah. the percentage is a little higher. Mm -hmm. uh, they spend money where, not frivolously, but I mean, I'm I'm in a pretty high up position where I get paid a lot, mm -hmm. uh, probably three times more than I would as if, if I was in an architecture office. Okay, wow, man! And everybody th and everybody thinks architects are rich. Yeah. Let me let me tell you. First of all, I don't know any rich architects. Wow, <laughs> I haven't worked for any rich architects. I've worked for some that are well off, but not rich. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, if you're looking to make money, architecture is not the way. Yeah. But that said, I wouldn't be in the position I am without architecture. Right. Uh, it's not not something you jump into without some kind of training or background in design or, right. you know, and th there's so many departments, but uh, only, only certain departments can you move up real high. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody wants to be a producer. I don't, yeah. I, I, I still don't even know what they do most of the time. I thought they just uh, paid the bills. They pay the bills and somehow they get paid a lot. So I don't know. Yeah. yeah. I have well, no idea. I think they're the ones that put the risk out there and uh, probably try to influence things to make sure they go well. And sometimes they step on the wrong toes and screw yes. it up. Yes, yeah. they do. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 But sometimes they, they anger people, but uh, yeah. that's who we answer to. You know? yeah, yeah. They're the ones taking the risk. Yeah. So that they can um, possibly get a huge reward at the end of it. If everything's successful or they could lose a lot of money. Yeah. 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 
do you have any advice for our audience that people that may want to pursue, take a look at doing something similar to you? Because man, when you watch the credits roll at the end of, end of a movie or a show, there's a lot of people involved, a lot yeah. of people employed. So there's a lot of opportunity. There is. Mm -hmm. So easily, I'd say another 10 to 15% of the people on that list are the, uh, are PAs, um, uh, assistants, mm -hmm. uh, basically like secretarial work, but you know, they, depends on what department you're in and what your um, duties are. Mm -hmm. So um, you could get started as a PA just by asking around, you know, uh, if you're in a city that does film, I mean, you can't, if you're in, I don't know, Podunk, Idaho, you're not gonna, mm -hmm. nobody's filming there. There's nobody you can ask, how should mm -hmm. I get into this? Right. So, so ideally, uh, look at what states and cities have tax credits for films. And if you live near one of them, then there's a good chance you could get in. Uh, oh. If you don't, start asking at your theaters, uh, like stage actors, mm -hmm. theaters. You can work there. Uh, maybe half the people that work in this industry came from doing plays and stage. Mm -hmm. uh, somebody still has to design the art backgrounds and build the sets for them so carpenters carpenters can move into this industry pretty easy um, nice. i know yeah. someone that does that yeah for yeah. a theater yeah and and they make a lot of money in, in this too i mean they'll they have to work harder than than a lot of us because mm -hmm. they'll have you know you make your money when when you go over 10 hour days so you start making 12 hour days you're really shooting in the money and then if they pay you for sixth and seventh days to work, which a lot of productions will, you're, I mean, you're clearing a thousand bucks a day as a, as a relatively young person in this industry. Wow, man. Nice. Yeah. Hmm. I mean, not, not the whole time, just I when know. you're on the next days. So then back to, you know, if you don't have one of the skills for construction or design, uh, you get in as a PA and you work two years, you're making, you're making more money than you would at a, at a job outside the industry. Hmm. Um, I don't know. I don't know how much they make, but he's, you know, around a thousand a week or 1500 a week, sometimes mm -hmm. thereabouts. I don't know. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you do that for two years and you start moving up just because you find what department you're more interested in. Mm -hmm. I've had PAs go from being a PA to working camera second second camera assistants uh within a year mm. because they said hey i'm interested in doing camera work mm -hmm. and people were like well we'll we'll show you come on in and and we'll teach you and then other people realize they they don't want to be a secretary all the time so they start learning set deck you don't have to have a school training to move stuff around and then if you do you know you do 10 15 films then you start learning what a set decorator does and you don't have to have an interior design degree or anything, mm -hmm. but you have to, you're constantly learning mm -hmm. and you back that up with, you know, taking courses in interior design, even though you're not going for a degree. Mm -hmm. uh, same with set design. You can start off taking uh, technical drafting classes and it's always better to get some industry experience in architecture or construction so that when somebody tells you they want something built with nominal lumber, you're not looking at them like, what is nominal lumber? <laughs> right. Uh, you know, you need to, you're, you're a set designer. You need to have answers without being told what to do. So the more, the more of a go-getter are, you are, the faster you're going to move up in this industry. And then from there you decide, do, do you want to keep moving up or are you happy just making whatever you're making, which is still better than if you went and worked at, you know, Home Depot or a life insurance office or whatever. Yeah. Right. 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 I like what you said about doing the assistant art directing because you could leave it behind at the end of the day. Yeah. So That's I think nice. I'll still be doing more on the really big films. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, this one's pretty big, but mm -hmm. uh, we'll see. You know, I, I, I typically, I get asked to art direct, movies that are like 
I don't know, 20 million and under. Mm-hmm. And anything above that, I'm, I'm, I'm not ready to tackle just being the single art director on it. Mm. I have another art director with me on this who's taking the, he's supervising art director. Cool. So, he, so, so he has to deal with the budgets and stuff a lot more than I do. Nice. Yeah, that would be a nightmare for me. Yeah. I would hate that. Yeah, it's, it's the worst part of the job. I bet. Do you get a rub shoulders with the actors at all? Like, have you any big names? Yeah, I went bowling with uh, Matthew McConaughey. Really? Uh, yeah. I love that guy. I yeah, do. He's, he's just, I don't think he's acting. He's who he is. It's yeah. great. Yeah. <laughs> Super nice guy, though. Yeah. Um, I talked to, uh, on my last movie on Judas, I talked to, um, oh my gosh, how am I drawing a blank? Guy from Apocalypse Now. Uh, Martin Sheen? Martin Sheen. Look at you. You can't, I'm, I'm, I'm pulling you out of the fire here. Oh, I know. I, I'm tired. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Martin Sheen, nicest guy I've ever talked to. Wow. Super nice. Uh, I talked to Helen Hunt a little bit, but she's, uh, she's more of a, um, well, every time I saw her, she was ready to do her role. Yeah. So she was concentrating on that. So. Mm-hmm. Some people don't care much for her. I, she was mm. fine. She was the way she's I fine. thought you should be when you're getting ready to work. So, Did you meet Bruce Willis? I did not. I was out of the office the day that he was there. Okay. Uh, I'd, funny, wonder, but, I'd like to know. I'd like to know someone's opinion on him. He, You can read things. He can go one way or the other. You know what I mean? Well, As I can tell person. you things, but I'm not going to say them on camera. <laughs> you're gonna tell me in a few minutes because we're gonna wrap up here because i have i've all these i've worked with people that have worked on transformers movies the spider-man movies you know apocalypse now back then uh rambo movies i mean whoa you you name a movie i've I've probably worked with somebody that has done something with that movie Mm -hmm. so we hear stories and and we know we know who's good and bad. Most of them are good to work with. I would think. Yeah. Uh, you talk about uh, Rambo and stuff. I would love to meet Sylvester Stallone. And I get the impression he's a pretty cool guy. I think so. I've had to turn two of his films down. Really? I was You're a big stuff. shot, man. Yeah. <laughs> well, they don't call me because they're like, Gaza, we want you on our film. We heard, we heard who you are. I get called because I'm in the Midwest and there's not many of us. Gotcha. Nice. Or, well, or maybe he's heard of me. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You know, that's good to know though. So there is opportunity for us out here in Cleveland in the Midwest. There is. Cleveland is a, is a very big movie city. I mean, before COVID I was, I was working on stuff as soon as one finished, another one started uh, nice. last two summers ago, there were five, four movies and one show filming at the exact same time. We didn't have enough people. They had to bring in people from LA, New York, wow, Atlanta. Oh, yeah. Huh. Now, now I'm sitting here thinking I should look into this as a graphic designer. Graphic designers make as much money as I do. <laughs> okay. <Yeah. It's, laughs> I am. Uh, it's, you got to hook me up. Give me a name. I am going something. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Oh, hey, I just wanted to ask you because this has been on my mind because this is the way I think. Did you see the latest? I don't know if you even care about this stuff. I am a freak with the UFO stuff. And they just came out with footage of this. Uh, what do you infrared? I want to say infrared. Uh, Thermal. I, maybe that's it. It's green, though. Yeah, so it wasn't red. So it was yeah, green. that's infrared. Yeah, of these. Uh, it was uh, from a naval like aircraft carrier or something they had uh, all these triangles up in the sky government admits they are ufos they don't know what they are they defy physics completely do you follow any of this do you have uh thoughts i don't but uh now i'm gonna look it up i th- i think yeah. they exist i mean I, I know i've seen things before that could couldn't be anything man-made so yeah yeah but it's funny you say that because maybe might have been last night even i had a super vivid dream about uh aliens coming and uh i don't i don't normally remember dreams so it was aliens it wasn't good oh uh... really (laughs) see i think anything that sophisticated is going to be benevolent they're 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 gonna I, i just don't think you 
continue to evolve and and get worse and uh, you would hope but look at <laughs> look at what we're doing yeah but we we're, are we're trying to people are trying to get rights to mining the moon and other planets they just want to take yeah true we've already got plans to just go somewhere and take we're not you're right they're like let's just and look you know yeah no you're right about that uh there's a the, greed is at our essence and that's why capitalism works very well if you tap into that and sure. you know use that as a motivator but there is a big i think that we are always raising our level of awareness as well at the same time we are you hope we're working towards nirvana but uh i don't know if that people are fighting it <laughs> yeah for sure for sure yeah. all right man uh with that let's wrap up um and I really appreciate you coming on the podcast. I was looking forward to this for a long time. Oh, but quickly, tell me the story of, so you had your lap laptop stolen. Now, did you have a rent rental car stolen or broken into? What happened? Just, just broken into. I had the car for, I think it happened in my first week here. Yeah, yeah, it was. And uh, I went to, I, unfortunately, it was an SUV, so I couldn't hide it anywhere. Yeah. So I put it on the floorboard, put my coat over it. Uh, went in at 7.30, came out at 8.30, just telling my friend on the phone how great this city is and how great things are going. And I see the driver's door lock is busted. Oh, my God. So, uh, so no yeah. They alarm? Like, didn't, wouldn't an alarm go off? I don't know. Uh, I don't know if cars really have alarms anymore. I thought they all did now. I don't know. I've I, well, you never hear them going off. Well, mine does every now and then if I hit the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> and then it's a mad scramble, oh my God. Yeah. So yeah, they stole it. So I had to go out and buy a new laptop real quick. And Yeah. What kind did you get? I ended up buying some kind of gaming laptop. Oh, yeah? Because... So not that expensive, I would assume. Oh, yeah, it's expensive. Yeah? It's like like $3,500 laptop. You got to be kidding me. Yeah. So the reason I bought it is because now we're doing VR headsets. And when we build our sets in the computer, because we 3D model everything, yeah, uh, the directors and everybody else can walk through our models in VR. It's amazing. Wow. So I had to buy something that would run a VR set. My desktop will do it because that's high end too. Mm -hmm. But uh, most laptops won't unless you get a pretty a, a supported one. Mm -hmm. Wow. But it's amazing. There's yeah 35. yeah yeah it sucks yeah my uh my <laughs> apple I, I i'm a mac guy and i always take my laptop out on i call it the perch my second floor balcony and uh i and i rest it on the uh the rails, rails the rails yeah. yeah and it's about it's about a five inch wide top to it but i i've been doing that for about three years you know one day Oh, yeah. And it happened about about two months ago. I accidentally <laughs> hit it. It went over and crashed onto the slate uh, patio below. It still works. No, uh, I have a, a, I had a good casing on it, you know, protecting yeah. it. It's bent. Uh, it, it doesn't look that great, like go, to go to client <laughs> meetings, but it works fine. And but, I can't believe that. Yeah, that's amazing. Yeah. So here's my other piece of advice for everyone listening doesn't matter who you are personal articles policy it's the it's the it's a lifesaver so you ensure it your cameras your computer your laptops uh things like that on they there's no deductible and they just pay you when you tell them it's broken or stolen where do you find this i guess you google it huh yeah I mean, mine's through State Farm. I know State Farm's oh, is one okay. of the best policies in the country. Super inexpensive, like thirty bucks per thousand dollars covered. So, wow. yeah, they paid yeah. out. I I filed my claim on a Saturday. Monday they deposited the check in my account. How nice is that? Yeah. Now, how much of it did they cover? Uh, my last computer was only a twelve hundred dollar one, so mm -hmm. I got twelve twelve hundred bucks. Mm, right. so they cover the full amount of whatever whatever you paid for it because you give them the receipts that's how much they'll pay out oh, just, they don't even count depreciation you know how much that stuff nope. no depreciation wow. Yeah. wow that's really nice that's a good piece of advice it's the best best thing you could buy and you don't even have yeah. to have homeowners or renters or car insurance through a company 
oh. you can uh, you can get it. Just call State Farm and they'll they'll sell you that policy. Nice, super inexpensive. That's really good to know. Yeah. All right. On that note, I want to uh, uh, stop recordings because I got some questions I want to ask you about. All right. Uh, <laughs> some movie stars. All right. <laughs> All right, guys. Thanks a bunch for being with us. And everybody go to over 50 starting over.com. Sign up and get this stuff dropped into your email box as it happens. All right. Talk soon.